I want to welcome everyone to today's service. Um, again, just as, as we're worshipping, if you'd like to pray, just ask for the mic. Rowan will come and give it to you. Yeah, That's just a courtesy for those who are online who don't get to hear the prayers otherwise. Yeah, So I'll hand over to Supriya. And I wonder where Akshay has managed to. Okay, anyway, just Supriya has got something to share. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all of my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in from behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light will become night around me, even darkness will not be dark to you. And night will shine like the day, as darkness is as light to you. You created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful and I know them full well. My frame was not hidden from you and I, when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body and all my days were ordained for you and written in your book before even one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. And Holy Spirit, we just want to invite you. We make this our prayer this morning. We invite you to search our hearts. We invite you to just... Come and just feel welcome here, Lord. This time is all about you. We just want to set aside every other every other attention of ours. We just want to train our attention. We just want to fix our gaze on you, Jesus. Because this is all about you. We want to lift your name high. We want to worship you, Lord, with all of ourselves. We thank you, Lord, that wherever we are today, However we've come into your presence, Lord, we are welcomed here, Lord. Your grace finds us. Your grace draws us. Your grace invites us. We thank you for your sweet grace, Lord, that never lets us go. I pray, Lord, that every wall that separates us from you this morning would be melted down, Lord, in the light of your love, in the light of your grace. Come, Holy Spirit. This time is all about you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Oh
Jesus, today we just thank you just for the very breath in our lungs that you have given us today, Lord. We know that's no accident. We know, Lord, that you control every breath in our bodies. And we just thank you for that. And so we lift our voices today, Lord, to honor you, the King of Kings, the Lord of hosts, the creator of the world, the savior of the world. We ask today, Lord, that our praises will be delightful to you. We ask that we might open up our hearts to you in, in a way that perhaps we have never opened them before, to give ourselves to you fully, freely, without hesitation, without embarrassment, just to stand in awe of you and worship you today to gaze upon your, your beauty, to be refreshed by your presence. We just thank you, Heavenly Father, for the gift of your Son, Jesus, that makes all of this happen, and for your Holy Spirit, who is here today amongst us. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We offer you our praises today from the bottom of our hearts with everything we have in us. We bless your name, we honor you, we adore you, and we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen.
Lord, today we worship you, we remember your majesty. You are seated above, far above all creation. You are holy, 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 beyond anything words can describe. And yet, Lord Jesus, you chose to come down to earth and to lay down your life for us. This morning, as we praise your majesty, we also remember how you humbled yourself to take our place and to die on the cross for us. We praise you and we will never be able to completely and fully worship you and understand and realize what this means for us. But we thank you and we praise you this morning. In Jesus' name, Amen. We'll keep a few moments for praise reports. We'll have praise reports and the sermon, then uh, communion and worship. I'm trying to finish a little faster because I want to have a time of prayer at the end. Uh, so, the mic is open. You just come here with the prayer standing and share from here. I'd like to praise and thanks, thank God my, for my mom who is visiting. Uh, she was originally supposed to be here only for a day, but um, God in His sovereignty <laughs> detained her. So I just want to thank God for His the way He works. Uh, just giving me time to spend with my mom um, in Bombay, which is happening after a very long time. So just thank God. I um, just uh, wanted to thank God that um, this week we got back to school um, and um, I'd had a pretty rough first semester and so I was a little worried about how second semester was going to go and um, so I came back a week early for my holiday and I worked for a week and I'm so glad I did because the, the week got off to a really nice start. We only had Wednesday, Thursday, Friday but I just felt so relaxed. Um, and it just was so lovely to know that I kind of know the way forward now after a, a very rough first semester. So that was just wonderful. And I would also like to thank God in advance um, for the eminent birth of my little granddaughter um, in the United States. Um, today is my daughter Afshan's due date. And so I'm joyfully anxious um, about that. But I just want to thank God in advance for the birth of this new little baby girl. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm re uh, really late in stuff that I have to do. Finally got down to kind of sorting out accounts and just sitting there, it struck me that God has been so good to us as a family's provision through the year. I think when we went into 2022, we knew that Akshay was due for surgery and none of those amounts were anything that we could have thought of, you know, that we can afford, especially being a family that doesn't save. But just God has provided more than what we needed. We, uh, we actually didn't even want to apply for the insurance because God had provided but people had worked to do that for us, so we just uh, prayed and did it, saying, God, if that's not meant to come, let it not come, because we don't really need that, and it didn't come. And we are quite uh, happy about that as well, because it involves some things which are not really straightforward. But yeah, so just want to thank God for provision for us as a family. want to thank God for provision for highway. It continues to amaze me how you know, we always end the year with more than what we needed. We've never had to turn down any outreach requests, you know, whether it's from an NGO or from the Hindi church. And for anything that we need equipment, there's always money left over. So just thanking God for his provision. And uh, but basically provision, provision for things that we didn't, you know, we didn't even expect holidays, going for the wedding, just everything so comfortably and I'm just so grateful for God, to God for that.
And we thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence, even as we've been uh, sharing praise reports, Lord, your presence in our lives, your presence right now in this place. We thank you for your word, and we pray today that you will be our teacher. Come and speak to us afresh, we pray. Lord, let each heart here, Lord, each one that's hearing, let our hearts be good soil to receive the seed of your word. In Jesus' name, Amen. So the last uh, couple of weeks or so, this, uh, this notion of favor has been on my mind. And uh, recently at uh, Ryle and Luke's wedding in Calcutta, there was this wonderful experience of favor that I want to share before I go into the message because it's sort of connected. So of course we were, uh, the wedding was that was going to be in Calcutta, was going to be in Luke's church and Luke and his family appear to be pillars of uh, St. Paul's Cathedral which is the, the prestigious hoity-toity kind. That's what I kept hearing. It was this <coughs> prestigious elite high Anglican church and of course it was a cathedral and uh, from what we gathered the way the bishop also was honoring Luke's fa father and his family, it seemed like they've, they're really very well known. And when we went, David said, oh, Alfred, Albert, I forgot his name also now. Alfred, was it? Alfred. Yeah, you know, so that name was just like, people were just saying that name as if, okay, this person was somebody really well known to everybody and important. Okay. And for months before that, uh, Ryan and Luke were saying that, you know, they were praying that I would get to do the sermon. They wanted me to do the sermon at their wedding. And I said, listen, you, you better be careful because that might not happen. Because I know how traditional churches are and they don't want to open, they don't like to open their pulpit to somebody who's not from that denomination or somebody who's not well known or not accepted and uh, highway church, what is highway church? I mean, who are we? Nobody knows us. We are not recognized. We are not registered. We are in effect, non-existent in the church community. So, and they were avoiding, I think they were sort of, you know, ostrich head in the sand kind of thing, avoiding even asking the priest, can our pastor, they do the sermon? Because I kept saying that, you know, you better find out because it may not happen. It's most likely not to happen. Anyway, uh, as, as things turned out, eventually, just about a month before that, they went to the bishop and showed him the, they didn't even ask him, they showed him the worship order, which had my name written there for the sermon. That's how they went went ahead with it. And he was quite peaceful about it and said, okay, sure, no problem. And he cracked a joke saying that, oh, it's highway. You're, oh, what is a church called highway? Okay, you know, so highway, you go fast on a highway, so maybe he'll go fast and finish the sermon quickly. He made some joke like that about doing the sermon quickly. Anyway, so... Uh, they called me and was so excited that I, I would do the sermon. I was I was the opposite of excited because I had really figured that I would not, I was almost 99% certain I would not have to do it. And I didn't really want to do the sermon in that setting. Um, anyway, then we went, we finally went to Calcutta and the, the day we reached there, we went, we went for lunch to somebody's house. And uh, she's from uh, Noela, she's from another church. She's in another Anglican church. She said that's a nice, simple, plain church. And and St. Paul's Cathedral is that hoity-toity elite church. And then when, and when she heard that I was going to give the sermon, she was shocked. She said, how is that possible? How have they allowed you to do it? They don't allow these things. And that got me more scared also. I said, oh no, what is, you know, how come they've, they've, uh, they said yes to me doing the sermon and she said, it's, you know, they just don't allow people to use their pulpit and uh, on the one hand, I, I got intimidated and, you know, I don't really like to go up in front of so many people. On the other hand, I recognized that, I recognized a glimpse of favor for some reason and it could, it could be because of Luke and his family also. But the fact that the bishop had instantly said yes to me giving the sermon. And some of you were there on the day of the wedding, you know what happened. So I'm 
So there were there was a bishop and there were three other priests who were part of that that ceremony, all with their cassocks and uh, stuff like that. And I was sitting in the pews, and I knew that they already told me you can't use the pulpit; you have to speak from the lectern, which was fine. And uh, then I hear the bishop saying, uh, "Pastor Udayrao." Now that doesn't even register in my head because I don't think of myself as pastor. He had to repeat it because I didn't think he was talking to me. I was just waiting for the service to start. And then he calls me up to stand with them during the wedding, you know, which was uh, something that I did not expect. I did not want. You know, I had not asked for it, I, I, and I didn't. I didn't expect anything except to sit in the congregation, and then at the at the time of the sermon, they would call me up to give the sermon. Instead, just before everything began, the bishop decides to, and he doesn't know me. He's not even met me at that point in time. He's not even met me once. He just says, "Where's Where's Pastor Uday Rao?" Then he has to repeat it because it hasn't registered in my head that he's talking about me, and he asked me to come and stand. Uh, right next to him. So during the wedding, the bishop was doing the. He conducted the wedding, and I was standing right next to him, feeling really quite silly over there. Okay, I was in my blazer, which the secret was that the buttons did not. I could not button it because somehow between the time I bought this blazer and I wore it, I managed to put on some weight. <laughs> so the blazer had to be like kept open. And like some kind of fashion statement, but actually I couldn't wear it, and and the rest were wearing the, you know, the cassocks and the, the various finery. But I recognized that for some reason I had been given a favor, and uh, it was it was so un so it was so unexpected, but. God had a reason for that, okay. And in fact, it was not just me. <coughs> the wonderful thing was, all of us who were part of Highway were granted such favor during the wedding. You know, we were welcomed, we were accepted, uh, we were honored. Whether it was the worship and all of that, there was that sense that it was not like we were just. Uh, friends of the bride or the groom who were doing something. That whole sense I had during that wedding and before that and afterwards, that there was a sense of welcome, that sense of acceptance, and I realized that really the word was favor. As a as a church, we were favored. And later on, the the thought came to me that, uh, you know, when there's a wedding, there's a bride and the groom, and the wedding is in one of the if, if the wedding is in the bride's church, then the friends and family of the groom come there. But in fact, this time it was the church had gone there. You know, Raya's church was there. It was not just friends and family. It was church, and the fact is that friends and family and church were all just. It was. It was all the same, really, in one sense. But that sense of favor. Uh, just got me thinking that, you know, why did God grant that kind of favor? What did He want us to do with that favor? And it was part of what we'd been praying for such a long time, that we would go. As a church, and make a difference, and display something of God, of His presence, of worship, of a different way of uh, coming before God in in that setting, which was, which was of course a very high Anglican setting. And actually, just as an aside, it was a really beautiful service, and it was a wonderful. I felt it was a wonderful uh, picture of what of the old and the new. And of the traditional and the contemporary coming together in that service, and I think that the reason for that happening was that favor was given by those who could grant that favor. And as I said, it was so unexpected. The dictionary defines favor as approval or support, and that's not a very nice. It's a very dry and drab meaning. Uh, the biblical meaning of favor is to freely bestow grace. To freely bestow grace, and when God grants favor, He's freely bestowing grace. And I think that 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 meaning is so 
significant and even as you were worshipping, of course, Supriya did not know the the message today, but we were singing about grace. And and it's wonderful to start a new year with that awareness of God's grace. And I want to speak today about really favor. And I was thinking that there's no greater manifestation of favor than God's presence in our lives. When God chooses to be present, when He chooses to do something, you know, when God moves, whether it is this constant, continuous uh, uh, intervention in our lives, or when, or whether it is a special move of God, both those are aspects of favor. And I want to just look at how we how we look at favor and what we do with favor today. So, in the book of Luke, chapter one. I'm reading verses 39 to 45. This is Mary visiting Elizabeth. Yeah. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favoured that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. I want to say three things about favor. The first is this, that favor needs to be recognized. And here we see John in the womb recognizing the favor that is upon Mary. Remember when the angel came to Mary first, his first words are greeting, greetings you who are highly favored. That was how Mary was addressed by Gabriel. And here we see John The word is leaping or skipping for joy and later on the word that is used is exuberant, ecstatic. That is what happens to John in the womb when he comes in the presence of this woman who has been so highly favored and the the baby, I mean, would have been just about conceived actually around that time when Mary comes and Elizabeth recognizes, I suppose through the Holy Spirit, recognizes what John is excited about. Because remember, Elizabeth has no clue what has happened. She doesn't know about Mary and the and the angel coming to Mary and all of that. Okay? It's almost certain Mary at this point doesn't even know that she has conceived because she goes immediately to, after the angel comes, she goes immediately to meet Elizabeth. But Elizabeth recognizes something and through the Spirit, she says, Blessed are you, blessed is the child in your womb. Uh, recognizing that Mary is highly favored. Okay. Now, Elizabeth has her own story of the miraculous. See, because she's also got, in a sense, a miracle baby in her womb. The whole, again, the whole story of the angel coming to Zechariah, Zechariah not being able to speak anymore. And because she is aware of the miraculous in her own life, she is able to recognize the miraculous when it comes into her presence. It's not that, you know, I mean, Mary is her inferior in one sense. She is her younger relative. And Elizabeth is at that point living in the reality of something so miraculous that an angel appeared to her husband that she got pregnant in her old age. The husband cannot even speak because the angel has struck him dumb because of his lack of faith, all of that. But I think that the reason why she sees the favor upon Mary is because she is living in the awareness of that favor upon her own life. And I think that's so significant. Later on, we see John. You know, it's interesting. John did not just recognize the identity of Jesus in the womb. Later on, he recognized the identity of Jesus in his ministry. He is the one who first proclaims that, Behold the Lamb of God. 
He doesn't just recognize the identity of Jesus. Later on, he recognizes the favor that is upon Jesus' ministry. When Jesus and his disciples are baptizing people, his disciples come and complain. See, that guy is doing it. But he says, no, he has to increase, I have to decrease. You know, at every stage, John is able to, from the womb to, the, to his ministry time, he is able to recognize the favor that is upon another person, whether it's upon Mary, whether it's upon Jesus. And I was thinking, do we fail to miss out or do we miss out on what God is doing because we fail to recognize favor upon somebody and not just upon a person, favor upon a word, favor upon a ministry. And I feel really bad when I you go on YouTube and anything that God is doing, any church that is flourishing, you will find more than that videos of somebody tearing them down. Don't play this song from Hillsong. Don't listen to this worship from Bethel. Don't do this from that. You will find somebody there and more often than even more people just tearing down something that, that God is doing. Now they can be right and wrong and they can be errors and all of that but are we able to recognize favor? The favor of God upon somebody or something. Something that God is doing. And I wonder why, the reason why we don't often recognize that is because we are not living with the awareness of God's favor on our own lives. When I think of people tearing down other Christians, I, I wonder, are you not looking at yourself? You know, when I stood there at the, in that cathedral, I knew I was not worthy. That favor had been given to me. And I had to accept that favor with gratitude or with humility. And therefore recognize, you know, you recognize favor upon another person. It allows you to then move into the realm of God's favor itself. But it starts with recognizing that I'm aware that God has favored me. God's grace is upon me. And I can see it upon somebody else. And Elizabeth is able to do that even though Mary is uh, technically somebody inferior to her. Even though Elizabeth is living in the midst of an amazing miracle herself. But she is able to immediately recognize that there is something even more awesome happening here. Okay? That is the first thing. We need to recognize favor. Secondly, we need to acknowledge favor upon ourselves. Elizabeth doesn't just recognize that Mary is highly favored. She, recognize, she acknowledges that Mary coming to her is favor upon her. What does she say? Why am I so favored? Actually, that's an, we've, in English we sort of made it an idiomatic thing. Her word is her words are actually who am I? Who am I that you should come to me? No? Now Mary is actually coming to her to receive confirmation what the angel said to her because what the angel said to Mary was pretty outrageous and audacious and unprecedented. Mary is actually coming to Elizabeth to receive some kind of confirmation. But Elizabeth immediately says, who am I? How can it be that you have even come to my house? She is able to acknowledge that this visit itself is God's favor upon her. A key element of receiving favor is humility. No? Again, Elizabeth could be in that place of, I'm living in a miracle. She was at the very center of something that the Jews had not seen for hundreds of years. Her son was going to be the first prophet since Malachi 400 years ago. And yet, there is that complete humility of spirit when Mary walks in. That why am I so favored? Who am I that I am the recipient of this favor? I was thinking of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was the richest man in his town. And yet he immediately recognizes that Jesus saying, I'm coming to your house, 
his favor upon him and his life is transformed as a result you know i remember that banquet in luke 14 there's a parable of the banquet where the guy sits jesus says go and sit in the in a lower place because then the get the 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 master of the banquet will come and take you to a higher place and you will be shown favor as you might be humiliated ki okay, that sense of humility of being in that place that that when therefore god shows favor you are able to acknowledge it that there is favor upon my life and uh, again just i mean it's putting me in a good light that i did not want to go up to that to stand on the altar there with the priest and that's that's also because i just don't like being up you know sometimes i think how how on earth am i leading a church i never wanted to be in front i always wanted to be behind the scenes but it just so happened that uh, things took to that kind of a turn but i don't know if you've been to christian meetings and you know if uh, where there are where there's more than one church involved you always have 10 people stand sitting on the dais everybody has to be given a place of honor and favor and otherwise there's a they feel insulted i mean i've gone to meeting where somebody has said would you do you want to see a prayer and i said no i don't want to just because i'm in in ministry doesn't mean that i have to be given a prayer to say or a reading to do i'm i'm okay sitting in the congregation and being part of that event but i think in india i don't know about other countries but in india we really see that that, that there has to be that need for everybody to be given some kind of uh no. or no and it becomes so you get so fed up with everybody is giving speeches and everybody is praying and you just want to get on with the with the event that you've come for but instead everybody has to be honored up there okay pride can keep us from acknowledging the favor that we are receiving because it becomes a sense of entitlement and elizabeth is able to discern just from what's happening in her womb she's able to discern the signs that pointed to the supernatural that was at work and therefore to acknowledge the favor that she was receiving at that point in time no if we are not able to acknowledge that then we are not able to receive what god has for us imagine if zacchaeus thought to himself yes i am the most important man surely jesus it's quite logical for jesus to come to my house no he didn't think that if he had thought that he would have given him tea and that was the end of the matter instead because he recognized i am not worthy Jesus coming to my house is favor and it transformed his life because he, he was able to receive and he was able to acknowledge the favor that was there in that statement of Jesus I am coming to your house Elizabeth is able to acknowledge that she is now the recipient of favor she is able to recognize favor in another person she is able to acknowledge the favor that is being given to her the third thing i want to say is favor has a purpose okay. what happens here in this story elizabeth is filled with the spirit and by the way this is the very first instance in the new testament where we are told of anybody being filled with the spirit elizabeth is filled with the spirit and she prophesies over mary and over the baby in her womb and it becomes in a sense the confirmation that mary needs of what the angel has spoken to her she doesn't just prophesy faith is released in mary and then we have mary prophesying and we see, we we have mary's prophetic song that that overflows but it proceeds from this fact that elizabeth now says something to mary yeah you know so favor as i said she she recognizes the favor upon mary she acknowledges the favor that is upon her and out of that emerges this prophetic word that releases something prophetic in mary as well favor is a gift that god wants us to use for his purposes again to go back to the wedding 
after all my preparation, I was not even ready on the day of the wedding. I was sitting there one hour early and still saying, God, what do you want me to? What do you want me to say? And in a sense, eventually I, I folded up my notes which I had and put them in my pocket and I did not take them out. And I just went and I felt I had to share what God was laying on my heart. You know, behind it all was this, uh, this, this sense of responsibility. I have been given favor, what do I do with it? What does God want me to do with it? What does He want me to say since He's putting me in this place? And God grants us favor, favor in a situation, favor in an interaction, favor with people. He puts, He promotes us into a place of favor. What does God want to do with that place, with that person, with that interaction, with that opportunity? And what happens is that different things keep us from using that favor. I've already talked about pride or entitlement, but even fear, fear keeps us from using favor. Uh, false humility, oh, I should not, I should not be here. Well, God has put you there for a purpose. If you, if you stay so humble that you are not then used by God, then that favor has been wasted. And so, when God moves, when He blesses, when He speaks, when He is sowing something in us, He wants us to do something with it for His kingdom purposes. And favor is one of those things that He gives us, that He moves into our lives with, that He releases in our lives. We need to recognize it in other people so that we can be blessed by them. We need to acknowledge it in our own lives so that we can then use that favor for His kingdom purposes. And I just want to, you know, last week I, I said that the word for this year, for me at least, and I feel for Highway is boldness. And I want to connect favor to that and say that as we see favor in our lives, let's step boldly into those situations. Let's boldly use that favor to do what God wants us to do. Let's not be timid. Let's not hold ourselves back. But let's move boldly into the situation where He has granted us favor in order that we may be used for His purposes. Let's pray. And if you've read the last year's devotions, you might remember this uh, lesson that we learned that the word that is used for Mary, highly favored, is only used twice in the Bible. It's once used for Mary and it's used once for the church. Just as Mary was highly favored, the church is highly favored. Each one of us is highly favored. And I thank you for this favor, Lord. I thank you for every demonstration and manifestation of this favor in our lives. I pray, Lord, that you will give us the humility and the discernment to recognize favor in others and to acknowledge favor in our own lives. Most of all, I pray that you will give us the grace and the boldness to use that favor for your purposes. To understand why you've granted us favor and to boldly step into those situations to release your kingdom purposes, to advance your kingdom, to do the things that are on your heart. So I say, I pray, come Holy Spirit, Come and seal this word today in our hearts. Come and reveal the places and situations of favor that you've planted us. And give us the boldness to carry out your kingdom purposes. I pray this in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Um, I'd just like to extend that, um, that idea of favor as we go into communion now, because communion is um, such a sign of God's favor upon us. What he did for us was such a sign of favor. So today, Lord Jesus, as we approach this holy and life-giving table, we ask that we may not take this bread and wine lightly, but that we may understand the favor you have bestowed upon us by giving your, your body to be broken in the way that you did. Today, Lord, let us examine ourselves and confess anything that hurts your heart or that in any way dishonors you. Help us to see our sins as you do and confess them in penitence and faith even as we live in your favor. Nourish us and give us new life as we follow your example and obey your command to remember you with these gifts of bread and wine. We thank you, Lord, that they are your very self. And we partake of them today with gratitude and awe. For on the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And after giving you thanks, he broke it. Gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and having given you thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us partake of the bread and the wine, the body and blood of Jesus Christ. He so just uh, about 500 times before sharing it, but then after this message, I thought I should. So these are just some of the thoughts that I had after this morning. You know, I'd, I'd been for the, the run. And uh, there are these hundreds and thousands of people running on the road. And I just thought, you know, why are they running? And some people are running for a runner's high. Some people are running because they find peace. Some people are chasing a better version of themselves. And I realized that the answer to all of this is Jesus and his church. And when you're running, you know, there are scores of groups carrying placards, boldly proclaiming what each of them stand for. And I thought, where is the church? And how do these people know what the church stands for and how powerful Jesus is. And one thing that really convicted me is, you know, I saw this man without legs doing a marathon. And I said, if he can do that, what excuse do we have for not proclaiming what we have received? I know there's spoke today of favor. We have received so much. Does the world, do the people around us know? 
And what are we doing about it? We can't keep quiet, you know, any longer because people out there are searching for answers. They're chasing a hundred wrong directions. And we have the answers. And we can't just keep it hidden any longer.
just reading what Meher has posted on Facebook. Favor I have not earned. Favor has been poured out on me. Just that today I can say, I know the God who made me. Is that not favor given freely? Worries hound my heart. Keep me from praying a prayer. But God in his mercy answers the prayer. Is that not favor given freely? The Holy Spirit by my side, unseen but present constantly. Is that not favor given freely? Humbled I am by God's good grace. Awed I am by his great mercy. Who am I that he chooses to give his love and presence to me? So this I must remember when he calls me to do a task, not to hold back and say I cannot, but to go boldly into the fray as he will always be beside.
and we know Lord that to move in the favor you've given us to step out boldly to reach out to the hundreds and thousands and millions who need you we need to be overwhelmed by your love overwhelmed by your love for us overwhelmed by your love for the lost and hurting You ask us to shine like stars in a depraved world. I pray that we will shine with the light that you have filled us with. We say, "Come, Holy Spirit, fill us afresh." Fill us to overflowing. We want to shine with your light. We want to hold out this word of life to those around us. We can only do it with your strength, with your grace, with your equipping. So we pray more of you, Holy Spirit. More of you. We thank you so much for this morning, for accepting our worship, for being enthroned in our midst, for speaking to us, for moving among us. We thank you for the seeds that have been sown. We thank you for favor that has been released. We thank you for what you're going to do in us and through us, even in this week ahead. Oh, truly, you are worthy. Oh, truly, you are good. Just give you all praise, honor, glory, thanks this morning. In Jesus' name, Amen. What is that? What announcement is that? Yeah, so we are continuing our forty days of prayer. We finish seven days. It's every morning six o'clock, every evening six o'clock, just for fifteen minutes. You can come for just one of those times. Uh, we've had a good seven days so far, and we'll continue for another thirty-three. Uh, announcing the camp. The camp is from is Feb seventeenth to nineteenth. Really hope that. Everybody here can make it for that. Just talk to Anila for more details. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to say bye to the guys online, uh, and I just wanted to have a time of prayer. That's why I finished a bit early today. I wanted us to, in the start of the year to pray for each other because we all have different needs, and to spend just a few minutes praying for each other in groups. And so, bye to the guys online. Uh, have a blessed week. Uh, yeah, God bless. <laughs>